Right, now I'm at that point. I've got to work out what timbers I've got and what is the best, you know, sort of ratio I've got. So I've got six, two, four, six. And up here, I've got 10 inch. 255, nearly 260. I've got to check it, check it there, check it there, and then I can make any little adjustments, you know, to allow for a few mil out. See, I'm about three mil higher there. I think, because I've got like 10 inch, sometimes it's easier to work in metri um, Imperial just the numbers but um, I could either put two falls on with a two inch gap or maybe ten I could put two falls on and a two inch gap and then another four I could put another six with a two on the top, but those are too short. That's not bad, it's like a banana there. Same the other way. No, that's not bad actually. But I don't really want two sixes together. Should have thought about it when I was down here, but I didn't want two fours together. Could have put a two in. Ah, I'll work it out. I think it's just going to be two fours. Right, I stopped trying to choose. I'm just going to use the painted wood. It's the four by two, whoever it is there, isn't painted. So it's a two and a six. Sort of balances the bottom. But somebody asked me, when do I use a screw as opposed to a nail? A screw will pull your wood in, a nail doesn't always do that, but also you can take a screw out. But in this case, you can get the sun on it maybe, so there's a big knot there. I haven't got another piece to use, no knot there, so I stuck a nail in it. Nail in the middle, no knot there. Big knot there, if I stick a nail in it'll just probably either not go in or break the corner. So it's a screw on that one. So you can pilot hole it, clearance hole it. Right, so now a load of 2 one button there, towel button. That's going to make shelves. I'm going to screw it on. I thought about nailing it, but screwing it helps to keep it keep it tight. If they sag, you know, it'll, it'll hold them. A bit like holding a sheet, like a fireman's blanket.
I don't know if you can see that, but I worked it out roughly with this. It's not quite enough, that last one, you know, the gap's a bit big, so I've made a slightly wider space. That should push them all back a little bit more. Try that one. Well, I'll continue screwing and doing top one. I have to turn it off. Otherwise the camera starts getting hot and then it's got fuzzy. The picture gets fuzzy. So I've screwed all those on. Just got to work out how I'm going to fix the tops on. But what I was saying is the heat affects the camera. It sort of makes it like fuzzy. There's like a snow on the film. I bet it weighs a ton now. Tomorrow, hopefully last day, I'm going to be sanding. I'm going to be sanding all this and getting some more treatment on. And then over the weekend, is just going to keep blathering it in treatment. Right, we're going to carry that in. Jesus, yeah. All right, last day today. It's a bit grey, no rain though, and it's a lot cooler. So all I have to do today is some sanding. With it being square, we, you know, we left it at square. We were going to knock off the corners like in like in the picture that he sent me but with it being square the last few days we've sort of or he sort of decided you know we're going to leave it pretty much square so all i have to do is just take, the, take off the sharp edge round that front edge a little bit and that's pretty much it you know run my sander round everywhere these boards I'm going to rub off the pencil marks, you know, like here sort of thing. But they've been planed and, uh, you know, when it gets planed, it sort of almost like polishes the surface. So when you sand, you know, you scuff up that surface a little bit. That's good for if you're painting or maybe putting a stain on or something, but that annoys me a little bit, but character. -er. Yeah, looks like he's painted the other side. That got the back's got clear treatment, and I told him just to soak it in there. Yeah, they feel wet. 
So I think he just he just put loads on, let it soak in, put some more on. That's it pretty much. Sanding, I'll be using this. I was going to use belt sander, but like I say, don't want it too round. I want to try and leave it square. Orbital sanders with a round disc. They're no good for if you're going around corners and edges. You just rip the disc off. Then Makita discs I've got are quite good, but even then, just rip them off. No messing today. 60 grit. I don't want it super smooth. Plus, you know, sanding by hand's a bit rougher than this thing. This thing will be quite smooth, I think. Oakley. Best sand purpose. It's the only stuff I buy now. It's the only stuff I've bought for 20 years, so. Pretty much all it'll do. It's pretty much all it's going to get. I think I'm going to have to just go over it with some fine paper. Not the feathery bits off. It's left me some dust sheets to put on the fence so it don't go into the neighbours. Uh. Right, just before I get any further. See here, all I've done is put a pencil line there and there when I was marking it. It's very tempting just to, you know, put a line straight through, but then you've got to sand all this off. So I only put a pencil line where, where you sort of need to. Save sanding like that. Just use a regular pencil. Whatever that is, 2P I think it is or something. Harder pencils, you know. 2AH or whatever they are, I can't remember, never use them. But they cut into the wood, you just end up trying to sand them off. You might get a nice fine point on them and a perfect line, but you pay for it later. So, yeah, so yeah, just use a regular pencil. And it doesn't have to come from screw picks. See how easy they come off. I didn't press hard when I put them on. Right, so that's all sanded. I just need to get into these corners. That's one sheet. It's still going quite strong. I've knocked some of the corners off, but generally, it's still still quite good. And like I say, buy this stuff. Don't buy that brown sheet stuff. It's crap. I think they're taking the piss selling you that stuff. You might spend a little bit more initially, but it'll last you. You'll save money in the end. If you haven't watched my other vid, cut off a square about that big. Hold it in half, neatly. That gives you four long edges, you know, for getting getting into things, bend it, let's get inside your coves and obviously the opposite way, got eight corners and if you hold it that way, if you hold it that way it'll do that and end up falling to bits, so hold it that way, it doesn't, you know, doesn't slip, see that way. A roll of this will last me a year.
Uh, I'll show you that again on this corner. But just like I do when I'm planing, I chamfer the corner off. Then you take, you know, if you, if that's, give me a pencil. Let's say I take that corner off, nice and square down there. Then I take that point off, that point off, and then you you end up with pretty much a round. and even things like that See, same piece of paper I keep that it'll go in the van Right, so everything's had two coats. There's a little bit left. So I'm gonna have a cup of tea and go around, put some more in all the bolt holes and everything. No, I'm not. Left keys in there. Guess I'll get me cut. <laughs> <laughs> 